A very good afternoon to you. Thank you very much for joining us for this edition of Channel One Lunchtime News. My name is Edward Kabasa. Our sign language interpreter is Simon Karotha. This live broadcast is available on uh, Facebook at, at KBC TV, and you can also watch it live on uh, YouTube. And you can interact with us throughout this uh, live broadcast on Twitter at KBC Channel One. Let us take a look at uh, some of the stories we have lined up for you. Um, this afternoon and uh, the Nairobi County or the NMS is uh, at this moment conducting uh, mass testing. Adin Michuma Udim is uh, following those matters for us. We'll be switching uh, to her in a couple of moments but before that let's speak about the Mashujade celebrations where preparations are in top gear at the Gusi Stadium in Kisi County, the venue of this year's Mashujade celebrations. Um, already Kisi is packed with uh, expectations of hosting the national event and the sprucing of the town has been going on um, to match the occasion. But uh, for now, let's speak about COVID-19. Irene Muchuma Udemi is standing by from Kibra constituency, one of the regions uh, where the Nairobi Metropolitan Services is conducting a mass voluntary testing for COVID-19. Muchuma, um, we have seen over the last couple of days the numbers of of infections keep rising and uh, it is a concern with the government warning that Kenyans may perhaps be um, staying ignorant to the COVID-19 regulations which have been guiding this country for the last seven months. Right, Kabasa, we are in uh, Kibra, and uh, this is just one of the stations that is conducting the mass testing that is being undertaken by the Nairobi Metropolitan Services. They are doing the mass testing from uh, 17 constituencies, and they have actually put in place 18 centers to be able to accommodate the numbers. Remember, Nairobi County stands uh, as one of the counties with high numbers of confirmed COVID-19 cases. Yesterday, the Ministry of Health confirmed uh, the number of COVID-19 cases in the country to standing at uh, 43,000. It is an alarming one, and now that uh, we are conducting mass testing here in Nairobi, a county that uh, is recording high number, any time that uh, we are having an announcement on the latest tests that have been done. And here in Kibra, the turnout was uh, positive. Uh, people started trickling in as uh, early as 9 a.m. Uh, this shows that Kenyans really want to know their status. But then the question that comes in is uh, what if uh, the numbers of uh, this COVID-19 confirmed cases rises? Will uh, the national government be able to handle this? I'll be talking to the deputy director at INMS, Thomas Ogaro, to be shedding more light on that. But then, Kabasa, when you come to the testing center this, uh, this day, and uh, it's an exercise that is also being con that will be conducted also tomorrow across uh, the county, you start uh, with the checking of temperatures, then you will go for registration, then there is a desk set aside for biodata whereby they'll be able to collect uh, your information your contacts and one of the challenges that nms will be facing is whether these people will be giving the right contacts and then after that is when you are going to have your test the test will be out uh, on a minimum on the minimum after 48 hours uh, and uh, they'll be able to be notified kabasa recording a very huge number of infections over the last couple of days. Do you think that perhaps uh, the Nakuru County is going to be following suit? I know that uh, the uh, case with the, the Nairobi region, uh, there is a combination of the county government and the Nairobi Metropolitan Services, but all these services, of course, they are geared to uh, what's ensuring that counties are in a better position to handle COVID-19. Are we going to be seeing this in other counties as well? Yes, Kabasa, it's an exercise that is kicking off in Nairobi and will be able also to be conducted in other counties. But then the question is, will we be able to handle these numbers? Yes, the NMS says they will be able to because most of the time, uh, most of the cases which will be confirmed, 
uh, they are likely to be asymptomatic. So this means they'll be able to get treatment from home and uh, they'll be able to adhere to COVID-19 measures. Kabasa, before I get back to you, let me bring in Thomas Ogaro, the Deputy Director of Medical Services at uh, Nairobi Metropolitan Services, to be able to shed more light on uh, our intentions to have these nationally when the right time comes. Well, thank you very much. Uh, as you've heard, my name is Dr. Thomas Ovaro, Deputy Director of uh, Nairobi Metropolitan Services. Here today we are testing the community members for COVID-19. We want exactly to know what is our disease burden because, as you are aware, uh, any infected person is able to potentially transmit to the others. People respond differently, but uh, though some of them may be able to uh, develop very serious disease. So by knowing the number of by knowing the number of uh, cases that are existing, then we can be able to know how to handle them and therefore tell them how to prevent themselves and also how to make sure they don't uh, potentially transmit to the other members. Now, in the case we get uh, main numbers, and as uh, we have said, many of the cases are basically asymptomatic. In other words, they don't have symptoms. As you are aware, the Minister of very rolled out uh, the home-based care uh, services. So in every county, among the 17 sub-counties, we have uh, the home-based care team. So the home-based care team is capable of taking care of these, uh, 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 the infected persons who could be found who are not symptomatic, and they'll be taken care of for the next 10 to 14 days before they are discharged. Once in the management, if any of them develop maybe severe symptoms, they'll be told what to do. We have a, 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 a referral system whereby they are taken care of. But most important is that uh, for them to know their status and therefore they can be told how to stay at home, how to ensure that they wear a mask, they, they use a sanitizer, they don't mix with others, so that in that case they are able to prevent themselves or they can be able to stop the transmission to the other members of the community. Thank you. How soon are we likely to have these uh, in other counties? In the other counties, I, I, I don't know. That's a question of the Minister of Health to, to decide because uh, I only speak for the Nairobi County under NMS. Well, right, Kabasa. Thank you, Sir Thomas Ogaro. That is uh, the Deputy Director of Medical Services here at uh, Nairobi Metropolitan Services uh, where the NMS is conducting uh, mass testing in 18 centres. Kabasa, uh, what NMS had planned uh, is to have 200 numbers be conducted per centre, but today here, as we speak right now, some minutes uh, past one o'clock, uh, 228 people have already turned up for the test, and uh, so we are expecting an upsurge uh, to also uh, be experienced in other centres. Kabasa. Thank you very much, Irene Muchuma Odim, reporting live from uh, Kibra uh, constituency where the Nairobi Metropolitan Services is at the moment conducting a mass voluntary COVID-19 testing for residents of Nairobi County. Muchuma will be giving us more details on that in our subsequent bulletins. But uh, let us take you back to Matters Mashujade where preparations are in top gear at the Gusi Stadium, Kisi County, the venue of this year's Mashujade celebrations that will be held on Tuesday next week. Already, Kisi is packed with expectations of hosting the national event and sprucing of the town has been ongoing to match the occasion. The excitement to host this year's Mashujade celebrations at Gusi Stadium in Kisi County is evident. The residents consisting of dancers, youths and opinion leaders pour to Kisi Town Street symbolizing the local community's culture of welcoming expected dignitaries. <laughs> they heard the president for honoring the community by hosting the national event. <laughs> Josh Okerio said the community had confidence in the government to deliver on the promises. They held the president for the ongoing implementation of the Big Four agenda. Uh, we support you for your four big agenda 
and we recognize you, we salute you, we welcome you, we love you. Umevanya vizuri chambu la muhimu kutuchagulia mmoja wetu ambao ni Dr. Fred Matiang kuwa mtu wangufu katika ofisi yako. Timothy Kipnusu for Channel 1 News. Former Kajedo County Governor David Nkedianye and former Senator Peter Bositet have rallied the Ma community to support President Uhuru Kenyatta in uniting the country and shaping development in the region. The leaders also commended the President for recent ambassadorial appointments and told the community not to be misled by leaders already engaging in the 2022 succession politics. The Ma leaders drawn from the entire Kajiado County were speaking during an elders' consultative meeting at the home of former county senator engineer Peter Olemositet. Mimi agenda ile nimewaitia ni moja tu ya kupenda uhuru na tuunge mkono na tusitoke kwa serikali. Ile mambo tuliona huko Kenol, mambo ingine tunaona watu wanakimbizana huko hiyo hatutaki kabisa. Hatutaki watu wacheze na amani kwa sababu amani ni muhimu sana na kila mtu ni lazima achangie katika mambo ya amani. Former Dagoretti South MP Dennis Waweru who was present hit out at leaders already campaigning and dishing out handouts claiming they do not have an agenda for the youth. Kazi yake ni kudanganya vijana, kupatia handouts, eh? Kudanganya maskini ati anawasaidia pretending that he's <laughs> offering solution to very complex issues with handouts. Why would we want to allow ourselves kurudi nyuma? Meanwhile, the Kuyo Real Estate has started issuing title deals to its members. Over 200 people got their titles for my Mahiu and Mashuru project at a ceremony that took place at Keno Kabati. Leo, nesiku muhimu katika Kuyo Real Estate, tumekuja siku ya leo tumepeo title. Kila mtu atapata taito yake. Na pia kuna mashaba inaendelea. The real estate company chief executive officer Gladys Wanjiko urged members who have money to buy land to take options of the plots they are selling as they wait for the company accounts to be reopened for transactions. Hizi shamba zote tunapatia watu wenye waliekeza kwa sababu hakuna kitu ya mwekezaji hata mmoja katika ekeza ama gakuyu hakuna kitu ya mtu itapotea. So tunafanya jabu lolote kuhakikisha tumedeliver kwa kila mtu na kila mtu tampatia ile kitu abayo ni yake. For Channel 1 News, I'm Bentro Njue. The season to honor our heroes with accolades and applause recognition is here again. KBC, in collaboration with the Ministry of Sports, Culture and Heritage, will bring you the Mashuja Day celebrations live from the Gusi Stadium in Kisi. Here to watch an elaborate documentary showcasing our culture and acknowledgement of our nation's triumphs that will run a day before only on KBC Channel 1. We engaged SRC and SRC came up with stand, standardized or uniform uh, payments to, these, uh, to the frontline workers and through the Ministry of Health we were given 2.36 billion. Rais amefanya firma kufungua inji ili tuwese uh, kupata ku, kuenda kufanya biashara hapa na pale today however the positivity rate has fallen from 13% in june 7% in august and now stands at 4.4% this weekend on kbc channel 1 tumefanya kazi za nje za ndani za usiri za uwazi yani tumeshibana kando ya siasa hata katika hii biashara mimi na this is my town, Godfather. I give tenders. And I'll serve a special one. Thank you very much. Thank you, thank you very much. Sikwema, sikwema takidogo. Kunini tena. 
Adela wakuna kwa babaki ya kafuzwa. Tonight on KBC Channel 1. After a long break over over six months due to COVID-19 pandemic, which brought sporting activities to a standstill globally, soccer actions resume in Africa mid this month. Champions League enters the semi-final stage, first leg encounter with Moroccan clubs clashing with their Egyptian counterparts. This Saturday, 17th October 2020, with Dad Casablanca host Al Hali. Catch all the action live and exclusive on KBC Channel One, your true sports partner. It's a quarter past one. If you're just joining us, this is Channel One Lunchtime News. My name is Edward Kabasim. The Council of Governors and County Assemblies Forum are now jointly pushing for an exclusive pension scheme for governors, speakers, and members of the County Assembly who have served for at least two terms. COG Chair Weekly for Paranya and Busia Governor Sospita Ojamong say the proposed legislation drafted by the COG on the welfare of governors will be a to include speakers and MCAs. The Council of Governors is in the process of drafting a pension and it's urging the county assemblies to support the proposal that will lead to the creation of the county pension fund. This pension is being supported by the, uh, the county pension fund because in the, in the pension there must be an administrator who will we will administer that particular pension. And we want this pension to be contributed so that there is no also strain because at the moment you are contributing, when you end your term, you are paid as a graduate. We want that, especially if you are serving your second term. Because even at the national level, if you serve only your first term, you are paid as a graduate. If you serve for two, for two terms, then you are given a pension. Busia Governor Sospita Ojamong said the welfare of members of the county assembly should be prioritized, considering their close proximity to the electorate. For five percent, he put money in the pension. He put the capital to make sure that he gets a pension. The people who are serving give him a pension. The government has not been given a pension yet. Council of Governors Chair Weekly for Paranya, who is also Kakamega Governor, noted the Building Bridges Initiative has captured two issues beneficial to the devolved units, including the channeling of more funds to the grassroots and the introduction of a World Development Fund. <laughs> Channel One News. The government has announced plans to build several new dams in the drought-prone areas within Garissa County. Water and Sanitation Principal Secretary Joseph Firungo says the move is aimed at ending cycles of drought in the region. And for a start, the government will rehabilitate Msalani a water project that had stalled to ensure residents have enough water. Plagued by alternating floods and drought due to what many claim is climate change, the government now plans to build several new dams in Garissa County in a bid to improve water security and management in the area. Speaking during an inspection of various water projects in Ijara, 
Water and Sanitation Principal Secretary Joseph Irungo termed the new project a long-term solution to overcoming effects of drought in the arid county. We have a, a proposed project uh, that we are also contracting. We have released the, the initial 100 million for, for, the, for, for the phase one of, of that work. We continue with the journey. We know that this area is actually charged on water and we continue sourcing for resources so that we can be able to, to, do, to do those works. He said plans were underway to rehabilitate the stored Masalani water project for the benefit of the locals. We are going to spend uh, about 8 million Kenya shillings to rehabilitate it so that it can be able to serve the residents of Masarani. Ijara Member of Parliament Sophia Abdinur welcomed the government's initiative, saying once executed, the project will go a long way in reducing conflicts among locals. Well, the water plant that is here is uh, through the initiative of the gov national government and uh, we, we are going to use this water for both domestic use, uh, livestock and for household irrigation. And uh, it is going to support and it is going to change the lifestyle of the community. It is going to introduce a new element of farming into the community. The government through Northern Water Board is also constructing a 43 million shillings dam in the area with 125 cubic meters capacity, which is expected to be completed by March next year. Purity Museo, Channel One News. Let's talk about matches peace now. A new look Persian primary school has opened its doors to learners at the common border of Sumburu, like Kipia and Baringo counties. The institution located in Amaya Baringo East now has boarding facilities and is currently hosting grade four and standard eight pupils who reported for learning in line with the Ministry of Education guidelines on phased reopening of schools. Plesian Primary School in Baringo East is a day and boarding institution that has enrolled pupils from Turkana, Samburu, Baringo and West Pokot counties. The school boasts of modern dormitories, dining hall, kitchen and water storage facilities constructed at a cost of 29 million shillings. The total cost about 43 million, but that's not all the other things that should be done in future. Attention is on the issue of peace building and conflict management. This is a school that is at the border of Laikipia and Baringo. Speaking, after launching the newly constructed infrastructure in the school, Chief Administrative Secretary for Devolution, Abdul Bahari, assured residents of the government's commitment to providing quality education for all. <laughs> Sasa serikali imeamua ya kuwa watawekwa katika serikali ndani kabisa na kabisa. Tiati member of parliament William Kamket said the school will also be used as a peace building tool to unite warring communities. Kuliko hiyo. Itasaidia kwa sababu Maralal ama Samburu West is just very near here. So asante. Mambo ya amani itaongezeka. National Disaster Management Authority Chief Executive Officer James Odwar expressed optimism of continuity of learning for pupils who hail from disaster prone areas. Coming together at early age, mixing, being together, being educated together, you can agree with me that as they mature and they enter the adulthood, definitely they not be like their parents and not be others. They will have integrated, they will have been together. And that one we expect to enhance the issue of peace building and uh, conflict management.
And in other matters, the Maasai community in Wasu Kidong, Kajado West are up in arms over an alleged attempt by unscrupulous individuals to grab their ancestral, ancestral land. Devastated residents who reside in the 4,500-acre piece of land say they are living in fear following threats of an impending forceful eviction if they do not vacate voluntarily. Wars of the Iwaso Kidong community in Kajado West began in 2017. This is when unknown persons claimed ownership of the land they have been occupying for years. Sijaona mtu yoyote tunasema hapa mufaka yao ni hapa. Na masaliwa hapa yeri ya hii. Kwa hifo nemekuja kupata juisi wakati hii sitima unapita hapa unakuja kusema mbeleni hii shamba ni asenke hii tolekindi. Mara ya pili unasema sujui. Kwa hivyo hapa ni yetu. Sijaona mtu yoyote unakuja kusema ate unashamba ni yao. The dispute has since worsened and the community now says it is living in fear. At an elders crisis meeting at the village residents decried injustice in their quest to seek protection. They claim that the Minister of Lands has been frustrating them through the judicial process where cases are moved from one court to the other while those claiming ownership of the 4,500 acre land do not appear in court. Wale watu wameweka mkono yao ndani ya kotini wametutoa kajiado wametupeleka Narok tumetolewa Narok tumeenda Nakuru sasa leo tumesikia tunapelekwa Kericho kwa hivyo mwisho wa kesi hii naenda Eldoret after 2018 tukaanza ku present documents zetu kusema hii document yao watu ni fake hapo ministry wakaanza kutengenezea hao document ambayo maybe wamefanya forgery na wame back 1998 1998 kampuni ambayo ilitengenezwa 1990 uh, uh, mashamba ilipewa 1998 na kampuni ikazaliwa 2002 hiyo inawezekana kweli Kwa hivyo tungependa kusema ya kwamba hii ni ukora ambayo inaendelea hapa. Kajado County Land and Physical Planning CEC Hamilton Paseina says land grabbing cartels have become rampant in the county. There is a community that has been living there and uh, there is no reason why newcomers, because they are able to access the different land offices, could be allowed to take advantage of that uh, because we cannot rule out issues of fraud when it comes to the issues of documentation that the, the group is uh, flouting. Paseina says the warring trend targeting communal ranches has witnessed increased land conflicts in the region. Suleiman Yeri, Channel One News. Thank you very much, Suleiman Yeri, for that report. And um, uh, just a quick one here. Um, Kenya's Paris Chepchirchir um, has won um, uh, the women all the... Um, she has broken the world record um, one hour five minutes and 16 uh, seconds of course uh, she uh, was holding the previous um, record she has won the world half marathon um, in one hour five minutes and 16 uh, seconds of course that um, is really good news for the country and more on that will be uh, made available to you but just to um, recap Paris Chipchirshir has broken her own world record in the half marathon, uh, winning it by one hour, five minutes and 16 seconds. Congratulations to her and the entire Kenyan athletics team. County governments have been challenged to embrace technologies by Kenya Agriculture Livestock Research Organization to grow food that uh, do better in their respective areas as a strategy towards attainment of food nutrition and security speaking during the World Food Day celebrations in Embu Principal Secretary in the Ministry of Agriculture Hamadi Boga said about 1.5 million Kenyans depend on others to get food. They say necessity is the mother of all inventions and so is technology. And this is what the principal secretary in the Ministry of Agriculture, Hamadi Boga, requires the county government to impress so as to improve on food security in the country. Naimi zokuba ni kwamba kila county is specialized na zao ambalo ni linafanya vizuri katika semu yake. Sio sote tupande mahindi ya masote tupande mihogo. Lakini kulingana utafiti uliofanya na kalro, waangalie hapa kwetu ni kilimogani ambacho takuwa bora zaidi alafu watumie hiyo. 
Speaking during the World Food Day celebrations in Embu, Boga said there is need to reduce the dependency gap, which he says stands at 1.5 million Kenyans. Wale wale ambao walikuwa na kufana njaa 209, baada ya kugeuza mindset, sahi wana export. Kwa hivyo inabidi tujitume zaidi katika kuwa elimisha wa Kenya, kwamba ile hali walio inaweza kugeuka, kwanza lakini mpaka ile mindset igeuke. Kwa hivyo unafiri tutajaribu kuwekeza sana katika extension na katika kuzungumza na kuelimisha wakulima wetu. World Food Program says one third of food produced globally is wasted before it can be consumed translating to 1.3 billion tons. Hamisi William, the county food and agriculture organization assistant representative, said Africa is still ripe with an active population and need to put measures in place to cope with securing food to feed the growing population. To find a kilimo tofauti, to talk about the kilimo and find a kilimo to find a kilimo to find a kilimo to find a na tuweka mikakati vizuri na kama FAO na washirika wadau wengine tunasaidia na serikali hiyo ndio kazi yetu ni kusupport government ndio tuelimishe watu wetu wakulima uh, youths tufanye kilimo biashara Timothy Kipnusu for Channel 1 News Chimolingot Sub-County Hospital in Bolingo County has benefited from a 12.5 million shilling one-stop maternity wing constructed through the partnership of Bolingo County Government and the Safaricom Foundation. The facility is expected to provide equality maternal health services for the benefit of residents of Chimolingot and its environs. The new maternity wing at Chamolingot Sub-County consists of a delivery room, a theater, post and antenatal wards, a newborn unit, a high dependency unit, three consultation rooms and a reception. According to Baringo County Governor Stanley Kiptis, the county government has equipped the maternity wing at a cost of 8 million shillings through funding from the World Bank. Safaricom Foundation Chairman Joe Gutu said by providing infrastructural support, they were seeking to reduce and eventually stop the number of maternity referrals to other health facilities miles away. In the whole area of Baringo, we are going to spend 82 million shillings to upgrade the facilities. If our communities are healthy, then our business will also be healthy. We are going to provide the generator that is required, required here of uh, 50 kVA. And we'll be able to do that within one month. Hilo lote tuwafanya ili wa mama na watoto wawe na afya na afya njema. This year, the county government of Baringo in partnership with Safaricom Foundation launched an 82 million shillings maternal health program aimed at reducing the rising maternal and neonatal deaths in the county. Kutoka hapa leo, mradi huu utasaidia sisi na tutapata kuona wawo ambao wanafanyua referral kukuja kule Kabarnet ama waende MTRH Eldoret ama PGH Nakuru. Baringo County records 375 maternal deaths per every 100,000 live births and 31 deaths for every 1,000 live births respectively. Other counties that have benefited from the program are Lamu, Mombasa and Wasingishu. For Channel 1 News, I'm Ben Troenjua. Isiola Woman Representative Rehema uh, Dida um, Jeldesa has poked holes on the newly established Youth Innovation Center at the county, questioning the sustainability of the project. The woman representative is accusing the county administration of misleading donors to invest heavily on a project that would adversely be affected by many economic activities at the Isiolo Central Business District. Rehema, who spoke in Isiolo Town, said the I'm putting the donors on notice. By the way, we are the people of Isiolo, we are the leaders. I'm putting the donors on notice. By the way, 
We are the people of Isiolo. We are the leaders. Hakuna bile mutaleta pesa ya kuja kusaidia ufisadi kwa hii county. You want to help and I want the donors to come to this county who are one project which has been successful. Sisi hii youth center tuko usishwa. Siku ya kwanza tulisikia hii idea ni wenye walikuwa wameenda Embu. Hii idea walikuwa wameleta. Kido kidogo tukasikia inafunguliwa hapo Desa Trade. Tukaona tu ikitengenezwa tengenezwa. Baadaye tukajaribu kushughulika shughulika tukaona ikitu yaani ni kama haituhusu. Kwa vijana gani wengine wanaandika kazi? Hiyo ni uongo mtupu. Governor atoke wazi wazi aseme ni hiyo ni njia kupora bali si kutetea wa vijana wala kutangaza talent ya wa vijana. Hiyo ni uongo na tunapinga. And um, it's time for sports, but uh, before we um, take a look at uh, other stories we have for you in sports, just a quick reminder, Kenya's Paris Jepchirchir has broken um, the world um, half marathon record. It has been uh, a really momentous season for her, and uh, she has run one hour, five minutes, and 16 uh, seconds in uh, Poland. Um, Jepchirchir has broken her own world record. Of course, it's... Um, a very, a very, very good feat, not just uh, for her, but for the Kenyan athletic uh, community, considering the season um, that has been due to the coronavirus uh, pandemic. But let us take a look at other stories that we have for you in the world of sports. Kylian Mbappe scored twice as a match changed Paris Saint Germain side, comfortably beat uh, Nims, who were uh, down to 10 men for 78 minutes. PSG currently lead the standings on 15 points from seven matches. Mbappe rounded the keeper to slot into an empty net in the first half before racing away to score his second to make it 3-0 for PSG. Fullback Alessandro Florenzi scored with a close-range header after hitting the post twice. Spaniard Pablo Sarabia, who set up Florenzi, made it 4-0 late on. Nims defender Loic Landre was sent off for a reckless challenge on Rafinha. Midfielder Rafinha, who joined the French champions on a three-year deal from Barcelona this month, was impressive throughout and picked up an assist before being substituted in the second half. PSG were without key forward Neymar, who was left out of the squad after playing for Brazil and scoring a hat-trick in their World Cup qualifying win over Peru on Wednesday. Everton striker Moise Keane, who joined PSG on loan until the end of the season, made his debut but was unable to get on the score sheet despite heading on to the crossbar late in the second half. And British number one Johanna Kunta has pulled out of next week's World Tennis Association event in the Czech Republic uh, because she uh, does not feel comfortable traveling while COVID-19 cases are on the rise. It means the 29-year-old...
thank you very much for keeping us company and a great day for Kenyan athletics where Paris uh, has broken her own um, world half marathon record. She is the world half marathon champion and what a season for her. The world athletics did tweet a couple of uh, minutes ago. What a way to end a challenging 2020 season from Paris Jepchirchir, world half marathon champion, uh, butters own women only world record she has attained this feat in Poland just a couple of uh, minutes ago uh, those uh, more details will be available to you um, after this Amfa Abidi uh, will be uh, dissecting that for us he will be making um, he will be analyzing for us and uh, and the, the men's um, half marathon is currently ongoing um, quite exciting moment for Kenya it has been a very tough year for the world athletics but uh, Kenya is closing the year on a high Chirchir beating the world once again to break her own world record one hour five minutes and 16 seconds in Poland thank you very much for joining us for this edition of Channel One Lunchtime News on behalf of the team here that includes my sign language interpreter Simon Korotha my name is Edward Kabasa have yourself a very pleasant afternoon ahead